and welcome to House Connect, your bi-monthly parliamentary program on CRTV, which gives you details of the legislative sittings of the year, the work of lawmakers in their constituents across the national territory, and a guest who explores the strides of lawmakers in the two lawmaking institutions and their contribution to nation building. Today we will be focusing on the first ever Youth Congress in Parliament. But don't go away in a moment, we will be right back with news from the speakers. Construction work on the over 54 billion Sierra France edifice of the new National Assembly headquarters is advancing considerably and is expected to be completed by August this year. It is a Chinese donation, and the Vice Prime Minister of that country, Liu Guizhang, was at the premises with Cameroon's House Speaker, the Right Honorable Kavai Gajibril, to appraise the project, which is a tacit testimony of South-South cooperation. The National Assembly complex under construction. The atmosphere of a great visit is evident. A bit of a mosaic of Cameroonian warmth hospitality. A slice of state protocol with the arrival of the third personality of the country, the House Speaker, Honorable Kava Yege Jibri. And assisted by state protocol, the security ushers in the August guest, the Chinese Vice Prime Minister for Finance, Science, Technology, Industry and Transport on a 48-hour visit to Cameroon. The official tribune for the event is completed by a portion of the Bureau of the National Assembly and the presence of External Relations Minister Mbelambela for the government bench. China and Cameroon have one of the most excellent bilateral relations in Africa. The Chinese Vice Prime Minister for Finance, Liu Guozong, is here to have a field of the construction work of the 15th story with 512 seats National Assembly building financed by his government to the tune of nearly 55 billion CFA francs. History will have it that in the midst of major crises in Cameroon, Economic crisis, security crisis, socio-political crisis with separatist tendencies, China stood by Cameroon. To be completed in August this year, the building also has a 1,000 conference hall capacity. The lone speech of the ceremony is pronounced by House Speaker Kava Yege Jibri, who calls the visit a unique moment in cementing of a friction-free line between Yaoundé and Beijing. I would like to pray to you to transmit I wish you to transmit to President Xi Jinping our wish to have him here alongside President Paul Bia for the inauguration of this building. We are all patiently waiting. And with the execution rate above 84% now, everyone awaits for the inauguration of the complex this year. Cameroonian youth have an indispensable role to play in the promotion of local development, peace and social cohesion. They were reminded of their responsibilities in the course of the first ever Youth Congress within the framework of the seven youth parliaments. To attain their goals, they probed into issues that have to do with the educational system, security issues, as well as the socio-economic insertion of their peers. A youth congress grouping 180 young parliamentarians and the first crop of 100 young senators charting the way forward for youth participation in local development Dear young parliamentarians and senator of the seventh mandate, it is a real pleasure and a pleasant duty for me to take the floor on the occasion of the plenary session of the seventh mandate of the youth parliament. For peace and social cohesion, 
The cream of actors had emotion, better the future leaders, and guarantee developments. In this dynamic era of globalization, technical, technological advancement, and social transformation, the challenges we face are manifold. From economic disparities to environmental degradation, from social injustice to political instability, the road ahead may seem daunting. Yet, I firmly believe that within every challenge lies an opportunity and within every obstacle lies a path to progress. It is imperative that as the representatives of the youth of Cameroon, you rise to the occasion and seize these opportunities with courage and conviction. You will need to harness the power of innovation and entrepreneurship to drive economic growth and create sustainable livelihoods for all. You should as well champion the cause of inclusivity and diversity, ensuring that every voice is heard and every perspective valued, and you will need to stand united in the fight against corruption, injustice, and inequality, striving to build a society where fairness, transparency, and accountability prevail. Cognizant of the weight of their responsibilities, the youth had varied views on education policies in the country. I wish to do my heart to you and your entire team for the initiative you have taken to put in place the policy of clean schools that seeks to install not only cleanliness but also discipline, moral probity and peace in school milieu. Despite this very laudable initiative of yours, schools have become areas of disorder, lack social cohesion and peace. What explanation, therefore, have you for the cases of violence in the school milieu, despite your clean schools policy? To guarantee safe schools for all with sound-minded learners, the executive reassured. These behaviors are committed by students against one another. Some are even committed by teachers. I'm sure you're aware of the one who died in Douala that was killed by a teacher. Or by teachers against other teachers. In addition, outside parties like parents, students from different schools and onlookers can bring violence into the school milieu. This phenomenon which has been creeping into our schools like a dark cloud for a while is undoubtedly not unique in Cameroon, as you know, not unique to Cameroon, but it does force us to consider deeply and broadly in order to return schools to the honorable place of peace that they ought to be and always will be. The obligation for a sane environment is shared and the engagement is picked up by the young lawmakers. We look forward to encourage students and make uh, the secondary school environment free from violence, ranging from uh, physical violence, uh, verbal violence, or, uh, oral violence, and as well as psychological violence, which is going a long way to destabilize the secondary schools and we are looking forward to reinforce these policies. The pockets of defiance threatening peace in some regions and the application of the major national dialogue resolutions also came under scrutiny. The vision of the President of the Republic in asking the separatists to go to the DZR centers was to equip them with skills, empower them and reintegrate them into the society. Things the first group was reintegrated into the society. Nothing has happened to the rest. What is delaying the reintegration of repentant separatists into the society? A probable solution for the lawmakers is the complete integration of dissidents who have laid down their arms. As a junior senator, I intend to stand as a bridge between our elders and the youths. Some of our youths, we have problems, but we don't know how to share them. We don't know how to seek help. I pray with my help and the help of God and elites in general, we'll be able to accomplish all what we have in stock for them. Though it's just a one-year mandate, but we hope and we have long-term projects.
For now, we intend to go back, hold conferences, educate us, brothers and sisters, some of them are in the bushes. The development of resources and competencies to local collectivities intended to quicken decentralization is supported. We are going to work together with our local authorities to see how we, the young people, who are the driving force of our country. We can put in all our energies and the training which we have also gotten here to ensure that the decentralization is a reality. What financial benefits is the Southwest and the Northwest regions have as a result of the special status for our country? These efforts bolstered up by bodies and the likes of the United Nations, the GIZ and Plan International, Cameroon, will be constructive. I would like to use this opportunity to once again make a plea to our partners to provide accompaniment to young people in order to help them implement their action plans. This monitoring will enable us to build on the results achieved by these young people on the field. To impact their communities, they put forward insightful suggestions. My vision for this mandate is to work with local authorities, the municipal council uh, and the Cameroon National Youth Council from this subdivision to see that we make portable water available for the population. Growing up in Du, we've always had prob a problem of water and my project this time around is to see that we restore and conserve water within the communities. So I'm going to be working with uh, local authorities to see that we plan more trees, water-friendly trees around water catchment areas and raffia because I know raffia goes a long way to conserve water. With a mandate to create change through volunteerism, the promotion of citizenship and a strong sense of innovation, they are adjured to be strong marches. By actively engaging in initiatives that promote peace and social cohesion, you are not only contributing to the well-being of your communities, but also laying the groundwork for a more and more just and equitable society. Whether it is through volunteering, advocacy, or grassroots organizations, each one of you has the power to make a difference. But promoting peace and social cohesion requires more than just good intentions. It requires, above all, empathy, dialogue, and a willingness to listen to different viewpoints. It means reaching out to those who may be marginalized or disenfranchised and standing up against injustice and discrimination in all of its forms. Moreover, it means embracing the values of inclusivity and diversity, recognizing that our differences are what make us strong and that only by coming together can we overcome the challenges that lie ahead. The intense exchanges with the members of governments on the promotion of small and medium-sized enterprises, the minimum wage and input substitution programs were edifying and telling of evolution to progress. Allow me also to congratulate and encourage the youth members of the seventh edition of this youth parliament for the quality of their interventions. With you, I can say that our dear and beautiful country has a bright future. I hope that the commitments made at the end of this Congress will be followed up methodically. I would also like to express my sincere gratitude to the government bench for addressing the concerns of members of your parliament with clear evidence. And I hope that the projects contained in the response will be rigorously implemented and monitored. The first youth congress holding on the occasion of the seventh youth parliament in Cameroon to trigger youth involvement in local development processes, peace building, and the promotion of social cohesion is in the annals of history, one attended by the presidents of the Pan-African Youth Union and members of the youth councils of Gabon and Chad. You're welcome back. 
Our guest on House Connect today is the President of the Foreign Affairs Committee of the National Assembly. He is also the CPD Member of Parliament from Gokatunja South constituency in the Northwest region. You're welcome, Honourable. Thank you, Esther. It's a pleasure to have you on House Connect. That's also my pleasure to be here with you. Members of the public know that there are nine general committees, but they don't know how these committees function. So today, having you as guests on the programme, it's going to enable them to know how these commissions function. Once the chairman's conference decides which committee is uh, competent to examine a particular draft, it is sent to that committee. And then the secretariat of the uh, uh, National Assembly programs the, uh, when that bill will be scrutinized in the committee. And those bills are distributed. First of all, after the chairman's conference, we have a plenary, plenary where the bill, is, the bill is now tabled to the full house. And after that, the committee is scheduled to work. How do you organize your work? Try to look through the bills uh, privately. And in the committee now, when we sit, uh, we elect a rapporteur. And my duty as the chairperson is to coordinate debate. And you know our debates are in camera. At the level of the committee, the members are free to ask any question related to the subject matter for as many times as they want. We discuss and we settle on uh, certain issues that uh, could be put in the report. And it is vital to highlight that these exchanges are done between the 20 members of your committee and a member of government who is there to, to defend the bill. It is true that uh, the, the 20 members of uh, our committee comes from diverse background. We are elected. Election doesn't mean that you are trained to know everything. So what we do to, to make up the lapses that we might have is that we organize every session. We have a capacity building session. We invite uh, experts in the various fields that we judge important to come and talk to us and enlighten us about uh, the in-depth of uh, certain things. And from there, we are able to build our capacity and uh, forge ahead with our work. When one listens to you, one will be mistaken that um, the Honourable Emmanuel Bagni is simply concerned about his work as chair of the Foreign Affairs Committee, as chair of the Network for the Promotion of Investments and also special advisor for people from the diaspora. But then the mere fact that you're back in parliament, you're on your third mandate, shows that you have a direct link with your constituency. So it's time for us to talk about the things you've done recently as lawmaker of Ngoka to South. Actually, to be in Parliament, I must come from my constituency. I'm sent here by my constituents, so I can't play with it. Given the difficult situation, we do the little that we can do to keep in touch with the constituency. Uh, I must say that I, within the recent past, I have ensured the construction of four major bridges in my constituency. Electrification, water projects, and of course, equipment of our health centers. For instance, you might want to know that uh, our hospital has been electrified through solar uh, kit. Which hospital is that? Uh, the subdivisional hospital of Balikumbat okay. has been electrified through solar kits to, uh, to, you know, to attenuate the frequent cuts of light. We also provided health equipment to those medical facilities. In the General Hospital in Balikumbat, the health center in Bafanji, and we are currently uh, finalizing the construction of a health center in Baligashi, in one of our, uh, our community uh, village in our constituency. Executing all these projects has definitely not been a smooth ride, especially with the, the crisis. How have you gone around it to ensure that these things are done in spite of the crisis? Well, we generally work through four men. First of all, to collect information about the needs of the community, and then we uh, preference them to see what comes first, and then within the means that we have, we see what we can do to salvage the situation that we can salvage. Occasionally, when it is uh, um, chance and, and, and when it is possible, security-wise, for me to, to go down, I go to see for myself. But I would have loved to be there every day. You know the situations. What do you think should be done to end this stalemate? 
first of all, I appeal, as I usually appeal for peace. The violence has never been the solution to any problem. We can fight for 10, 15, 20, 30 years. At the end of the day, it is dialogue and understanding that will bring peace and development into our community. And to wrap up this interview, what are your plans for your constituency um, the next two years before this mandate ends? As I stand now, my main concern for my constituency is the roads. For the past seven years, no entrepreneur, no enterprise has accepted to work on our roads because of the, the security concerns. I'm trying to work out a way to see how the road can be done because the people produce a lot and most of those produce get rot in the farms and uh, 90 to 95 percent of my constituents are farmers, hard-working people. They have this very serious problem of evacuating the produce, their produce to the market to be able to gain uh, some resources to sustain themselves. Thank you very much, Honourable. Bangmi Emmanuel, CPDM member of the National Assembly for Ngokutunje South Constituency, President of the Foreign Affairs Committee of the National Assembly, President of the Parliamentary Network for the Promotion of Investments and Special Advisor to the Parliamentary Network for the Diaspora and Decentralized Collectivities. Thank you so much, Honorable, and we're wishing you more grease to your efforts. Members of parliaments are on recess, a period which gives them ample time to address the needs of their constituents. Others regrouped in parliamentary networks have been engaged in rolling back malaria, while some, using their parliamentary grants, have been offering didactic material and other assistance for the development of their communities. Malaria remains a scourge in Cameroon, standing as the most widespread endemic disease affecting over 2 million inhabitants annually. Vets, absenteeism from school and work are the consequences the caucus of parliamentarians on health financing are tackling. With a visit to the Center for Research and Infectious Diseases in Yaoundé, they hope their findings will tell our health policies voted subsequently. We are planning that we are going to have a special parliamentary session where he is going to come in uh, into the house chamber, present this research center, so that from there, parliamentarians will be able to know exactly what he is doing. A shift in the malaria management plan is essential due to resistant forms. We are generating data that the Ministry of Health is using to really select the best tools to reduce malaria burden. That will allow Cameroon to be at the forefront of this fight. In the arid areas of the north, Farmers and common initiative groups in Dembo received farm inputs to improve their yields. The National Union for Democracy and Progress Member of Parliament for Benue East, Honorable Umul Kulchumi Ahijo, gifted the population and for the over 100 persons trained on the transformation of soya beans, certificates were awarded and aid given. In the Nyong and Fumu, the revision of electoral list is on course. The circular letter of the Secretary General of the CPDM Central Committee is being explained to the electorate and the vision of stepping up voter enthusiasm. We are going to first to establish the ID to those who do not, do not have the ID and also the birth certificate. So we think that we are going to do our best to increase the number of electors in our section. From the current 6,000 registered in Kobdombo, they are targeting more than 25,000 voters for the upcoming polls. It is on that note that we wrap up this edition of House Connects, which focused on the first ever youth congress organized on the occasion of the seven youth parliaments under the theme Youth Participation in the Promotion of Local Developments, Peace and Social Cohesion. So the fourth night when we meet again is goodbye on behalf of the entire production team of House Connects.